That is insane. How much movement is there? Fellas, feels like we were just here the other day. Because we were. <coughs> <coughs> I'm funny, huh? Anyway, we are here. Well, you guys see the title. I can never, like, surprise you guys with anything because I always make the title of the video of what's going on. So, as you can see, and I told you in the last video anyway, if you didn't watch it with the APR unit, go back and watch that. Um, here we are. Oh, I opened it all around. Oh, we have a nice sticker. JXB Performance. And this isn't a part that's just for Volkswagen Audi stuff. Um, they stuff for like Corvettes, CTSVs, Mustangs, Camaros, Porsches, other Audis, other Volkswagens. They do these drive shaft bushings for a lot of cars. So when we get out there, I'll show you. Um, so these are for like the bottom of the thing. These go on the drive shaft itself, which I thought that they'd be a bit more. This feels like a well, if this is, this is the street version. So there's a street version and a race version. Most people seem to go with the street version. Um, I asked a lot of people about this stuff and not a single bad thing was said. So there's a lot of hardware here. More rubber, four rubber bushings, two bolts, some washers, four more rubber bushings, two bolts, and some washers. I don't know where any of this stuff really goes, but the main unit is this. Anyway, like I said, I made a post I did it in the big, uh, the district, the district group, which is mostly the five cylinder guys. Cause you know, they're big power guys. I want to see what their opinion was on this. Not that I'm big power or anything, but you know, they beat on their cars and have more stress on parts than the four cylinder guys typically do. And everyone there was like, get it, get it, get it, get it. So we got it. <laughs> um, Oh yeah, so basically the stock unit, I'm gonna be able to get under there and just move the drive shaft around all crazy like, and under load, it would be even worse, causing drivetrain slop, slowing you down. Um, this is supposed to help. People claim, the one dude claimed, it, this part alone took his 60 foot from a 1.7 down to a 1.5. I've never been in the 1.5s in my life. The best I've ever gotten on the street was like a 1.67 with brand new RT660s on a good surface. With, um, I think it was like in the like 27, 26 PSI range. Um, and that was, that was amazing. That was awesome on the draggy. So these are brand new with softer sidewalls. We got the new dog bone and this. I'm really hoping because we, we're going to the track on Sunday and it's going to be prepped. So if I can just get like, um, so my 1111 run was on shitty tires spinning off the line. We did a 1.76 or a 1.77, something like that. So with new tires, that same road should be like a 1.6 something. And then you add in all this new stuff um, and prep and on a, a good surface at the drag strip, I'm hoping we can get Realistically, I really only need like a 1.65 to get into the tens. I'm at 11, 11. So I need 0.11 off my time. Now, if I can do that in a 60 foot, that translates way more on the top end. Everything's in the 60 foot, essentially. So yeah, we're doing all these models basically to get our 60 foot down. But if even imagine if I can get like a 1.58 that would be insane with no Howdex tune, no Howdex spring. Like, and we're, we have 3.7 degrees of negative camber up front and negative 2.1 in the rear, and we're about to order coral over. So um, if we can get into the 1.5s as we sit and then do the coil overs with the corner balance, and I did upgraded springs on them um, and taking some of that camber out, we're gonna go into like the to like 2.3 range probably. Um, up front um, and fix out the toe as well. So if we can get this as we sit with the alignment and the springs and the struts that we're on, and when we do coilovers, we're gonna be even freaking faster. So anyway, I always wind up doing all these rents and I apologize, but you guys like it. At least some of you. Look how nice this unit is. There's a cap on this side, but not the other side. It's weird. Anyway, this is a 
God, I don't know what it is about Billet. Um, maybe you guys are the same way, but I love Billet. So we got two big Allen keys. Oh, look, I'm looking at the, you guys got to see the cool side before me. Let's bring this up closer. Look at that. Let's get some focus. Look at that. This is nice. You got your Allens up there. So you got two pieces of hardware that will go in here to connect those feet, I guess, and then hardware that goes into the body of the car itself. So, boom. There we go. We we'll get a little montage going, maybe. That thing is sick. A little zoomy zoom. That is gorgeous. So yeah, this is what's going in today. And I'm super stoked. It's not a whole lot of work to do it either. We take out the mid pipes. We take out the, um... oh, there was a thing on that side too. Um, take out the mid pipe, boom, it's a V band and uh, whatever, slidey type. And then the heat shield, which I think is like four or five of them, like little twisty Johns, like the little metal guys. They push on, but they twist off. And then we should be there. But the old one doesn't come out very easily. We gotta take the cells all to it, and it's aluminum, so I'm probably gonna go through a couple of blades, getting it out, and making a bunch of noise, and I didn't bring safety glasses. So this is gonna be fun, um, unless we have some sitting around, which we might. We got, you got any safety glasses sitting around? Actually, I do, I do have some on my, my work bag. So we do have safety glasses, thank goodness. Here we go, you can see where it says street. What does it actually say? JXB Performance part number control without compromise. Street version. Very cool. Compromise, huh? <laughs> Compromise. Oh, well, it says it there too. It's funny. It's a kind of running joke between us because I once said compromise and now she never lets it down. We got the, yeah, the bushings for the feet. And then I guess more bushings that go to the frame. I'm not exactly sure. I gotta look up the instructions, but this thing's solid, really solid, dope piece. I'm super excited to get this on. Shout out my boy again, Sean. It's not stock. He has these on the site. They're on sale right now. Go get you some um, and yeah, just get it done. This is like the last piece we really need for the drive line to be completely locked down with all the Verkline stuff, the APR unit, um, the 034 engine mounts and the majority of that stuff. Well, besides the work line stuff, all that came from Sean and it's not stock. He has all the things. So, um, yeah, just super freaking stoked. After this, coilovers. Once coilovers are done, the suspension, driveline, everything's done under there. And then we can do brakes. We can do fuel lines. We can do uh, port injection eventually. Um, the P3 gauge actually shows up this weekend, so we'll be able to hook up ethanol sensor, uh, analog boost, and be able to see, we'll finally be able to see uh, our coolant temperature uh, without pulling up OBD-11. We will see maybe trans temp. I'm not sure. I haven't had a P3 with a, um, a DSG car yet. Hey, boys. Shh. And uh, what other things? Oh, air intake temps during a pool, which would be sick. Uh, just AFRs, everything. And it, then the P3 also gives you two analog like things you could add and 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 have in there so i could add um oil pressure i could add coolant pressure if i throw the sensors in and then wire them in so it gives you a couple extra spots for things which is super dope but let's go out i'm gonna get the car on jacks it's actually the coldest day in texas since we moved here so i'm gonna put a jacket on find a beanie let's get to work All right, guys, we got the front jacked up. Just enough room to get up under here. We're gonna go ahead and, I'm gonna have to jack this up further. And we're gonna get these two rusty bolts off. We're gonna get that there V-band off, which will give us access to this heat shield, which these just, like I was saying earlier, they spin off, but you can just push them on. So there's four of those to hold this heat shield, and then right about here is the drive shaft carrier. So we will get those off and then we'll be there. Then we break out the Sawzall 
and go ham. Actually, we might have to take off two heat shields. We'll see. If you guys watch the JXB install video, which you definitely should, just don't go off of what I'm doing. These clips, they go, they're in the four corners here. They are the most annoying thing of this whole thing. I almost dropped my phone. So they spin inside those clips and those clips are held in by pressure of the metal clip itself. But I have one here. This is what it looks like. So it comes in from the backside and then they retain that metal piece. But as you spin it, the whole thing's falling. It's just, it's super annoying. And then to get it around those clips to spin it off is like impossible. Um, and right now it's just spinning in place. They should just spin and the whole thing brings down together. But because of the way that they're made, you can kind of see those little teeth on the threads. They just, they just want to keep going on the, the, the same thread over and over. So I'm going to get a flathead behind it to give it some pressure and maybe it'll go down these threads. I've been on these for way too freaking long. I just want to start cutting stuff already. <laughs> Man, those clips are seriously the devil's, the devil's clip. All right, so now we're to this. If you guys watched the video, like I said, you should. We're going to put a jack stand over here and a jack stand back here somewhere to support the drive shaft because you don't want, if this thing comes down to a certain angle, the bearings are going to fall out. And then you got to get this thing rebuilt and it's super expensive, takes a long time. You can imagine this thing is a whole uh, pain to ship. And uh, yeah, anyway, so definitely support the drive shaft, but we're going to cut it right around here right around here and then we'll cut it in half and then take it off then we have to uh take a knife cut the bearing down or the bushing down in there a little bit and then we install the new one but here's what we're getting rid of you ready to see this shit watch, watch this shit. look at how much movement there is Man, that is crazy let me try and get a better angle I can only do it with one hand right now. The way the, let me move the camera. This should be a real good angle, right? Look at that. That is insane. How much movement is there? Wow. All right, let's get rid of this slot once and for all. All right, boys, here we go. We got a bunch of blades over there. Come start making some cuts. All right, y'all, we got the legs off. Actually, these blades cut right through it pretty easily. It's just, I should have gave myself more ground clearance because the tool was like on the floor, but it uh, wasn't too bad, honestly. Made a big mess. Only got a little bit of stuff in my eyes, even though I got safety glasses on. And they're Oakley's. So they're supposed to be real good, but they're coming in there through the nose, you know, since I'm laying down. But now we got the two easiest cuts and we can put this thing back together. Well, a little pile of trash. I had to change blades. I thought I had to change blades, but just the angle. I have such a big sawzall, and I really didn't give myself a whole lot of room here. I should have jacked it up higher, but we got through the first part, or, well, this. All right, now in the video on their site, they cut through this ring along with everything else. My sawzall did not, so, and this, Part of the bearing, I kind of cut it, which needs, it needs to come off. It's like a, I don't know, outside bushing you kind of see inside there. So we'll have to cut it, we'll have to cut down and then cut around. We gotta cut this outside squishy piece off. Let me zoom out a little bit, sorry. So we gotta cut cut that off and then we're gonna have to hold this here with the saws all very sketchily and finish cutting this. See, I nicked, got a couple nicks in the drive shaft, some rubs. 
Um, if you have a smaller, a small sawzall, or I guess really being on a lift would be ideal. So hopefully I can just finish this cut and bend it because this stuff's annoying. This is definitely aluminum, so this is gonna be a rattle city here. I have to cut real slow. Well, I wound up just using some dikes to cut that little ring off that was there. Got to cut off. Kind of already started it. And see, I kind of nicked the drive shaft a little bit. Hopefully that doesn't cause me problems later on. It's just kind of bring this all the way down. And we just basically just got to make this flat. This bushing will just sit inside the other bushing, so they said it doesn't need to be perfect or anything. Man, this is some stress on the wrist. Really just trying to get it flat as possible here. Look, you guys don't need to see all this. Wow, so we are finally to the part of assembling things. I just looked through the video. Uh, we're gonna get our bushings together, get our, get our there's bushings that go, bushings and washers go in a specific order on these. He said all the text faces the front of the car, uh, including on this and on the bushings. So we will get this, the feet set up and figure out what order we want to do. Because this splits in half, so we'll have to put the top half on, rotate it, bring it up top, then bring this up to it, get those two bolts in. Um, and then, well, by that point, we got to figure out. Do we want to put the feet on before or after? Um, it's going to make it a little bit difficult to line this up with this if the feet are on, but it's going to be difficult to get the feet in if this is on already. So I don't know what order we're going to do just yet. Well, hopefully I don't get in the way of the camera too much, but take this bush in here and see how well I cut it down just to see. Oh, yeah, it looks really good. You guys just be able to see there's like a spot here. Just, I made this nice, as flat as I could, really, to make that sit there real nice. And there's not a front or back on the bushing. The bushing doesn't matter which way it goes. But that, and you see, we got the text on this. Make sure this is even. Okay. I'm just gonna set it right here, swing it around, make sure it's seated on there properly. Okay, now that just sits up there. Now, the fun part, oh, for some reason I thought this plastic was gonna be in the way. So we could just put the feet on now, bring this buddy up. Line it with the holes here. This is what I was afraid of. So, a couple of threads here. And then our main focus is going to be sh making sure that we align everything up here. Very good. So this whole thing will kind of slide. There's space for it to move. We're going to go all the way forward, it seems to get that, oh yeah. You can kind of like feel the bushing. You wanna feel around, make sure it's, the lip isn't rolled over. And from here, we can just, so I'm gonna get these fairly close to one another this side, you'd be able to see that, this, that the lips aren't all the way out. So they look good. I'll get up in there with the camera in a moment and show you guys what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. See like this lip, just wanna make sure. It'd be kind of hard for it to be messed up, but. All right, so I took all the hardware back out, lock tighted everything. These top six mils are 25 Nm. These guys right here are 19 Nm. And they didn't give a torque value for these, so I gave them each about two oogadoogas on setting number one. So, um, yeah, it's all in. I'm freaking stoked. I'm going to shimmy around the front here, and we can get a view 
get a, a nice view and a nice picture of this thing installed. Let's see here. I got the camera in my face. Is that good enough? How's that look? Oh yeah, that's a view, boys. This thing is sick. Wish I wouldn't have dicked up the drive shaft a little bit there, but she looks freaking phenomenal. That's awesome. I cannot wait to go for a drive. I gotta get in and clean all these aluminum shavings out of my hair and my jacket, change clothes, and then we'll go for a, a little drive around the neighborhood or something. Man, does that ever look good. All right, I'm going to get some pictures here and get the car on the ground. The final thing before we uh, cover it up with the heat shield. Oh my God, ready? I'm gonna give it all that I can. Uh, yeah. That's all my weight. Oh, there is a jack stand back here. Hold on. Let's move that jack stand off the back. There's not the one on the front. Let's do it again. So the up one wouldn't have mattered, but. And then the down. Very little movement. Hell yeah, brother. started the camera as soon as I left the garage but uh, wow you can't even tell that it's in there like NVH wise um, look at the engine coolant temperature and oil temps low so I, I can't really floor it at the moment I got like a 10 minute drive to the grocery store but here I am going 60 and I'm not feeling like I, I expect at least a little NVH from it just like the APR unit the dog bone not relevant but um feels good don't feel anything crazy um yeah so i'm a little upset I'm going on a small rant here this sunday we had a track rental quarter mile from like eight to four like private 40 people unlimited runs catered food i guess it's gonna freaking rain over there sunday so yeah, they canceled it. Well, they didn't cancel. They rescheduled it, not to December, to freaking January. And it's the end of January, January 21. So we're not going to the drag strip until next freaking year, unfortunately. So, but the, the positive note on that, I will have coilovers by then with way better springs, way better struts. Um, like the camber will be taken out. Well, a lot of the camera, about half the camera will be taken out up front and uh, the toe will be fixed. So the suspension will be in way uh, more favorable shape in January uh, versus now. So that's a plus, gives us more time to repair. And uh, tomorrow morning, it's looking like it's gonna be around 50 degrees with the humidity around, uh, what's it, like way lower than it's gonna be Sunday. So. Hopefully, we see a good time. Uh, I'll put the camera back on once the engine's warmed up and we'll do a small pull. But so far, so great. This might be a bus, guys. As you can see, that is that is wet. It is wet out. It didn't rain. It must have hit the dew point or something. It's 54 degrees out. I'm a little upset. Maybe the road will be drier, but I doubt it.